welcome to fresh air on this picturesque mountaintop. Well, I could relax all day on this beautiful, delectable mountains quilt. This pattern was named after a passage in Pilgrim's Progress written in 1678. I selected fabrics to match the words in the passage. At a distance, the pilgrims saw a most pleasant mountainous country, beautified with woods, flowers, also with springs and fountains. Very delectable to behold. Well, you can make your bedroom delectable to behold with this queen size quilt and then accent the quilt with pillow shams, decorator pillows, and a dust ruffle. This quilt has four rounds of mountains with plain spacers in between the mountains. The center is a peace star with a fussy cut rose right in the center. When the pilgrims of Plymouth Rock first landed on American shores, they were assured of peace and plenty. Well, millions of other pilgrims and oppressed have followed to this beautiful land. So let's have peace and plenty and go on with this quilt. Stand by a mountain and it shall bring you peace. Well, I do have peace because all of my mountains are done. All four are finished for round one and eight are finished for round two. The first thing I need to do is just square up these mountains. Oh my gosh, it looks like there was an earthquake on the bottoms of some of these. And then once the blocks are squared, I'll know what measurement to cut the corner squares. The corner squares are based on five of these sections right along here. And then I'll also know what to cut the block dividers. And they're based on two of the sections right here. Well, hopefully, all of your seams are straight. The measurements are based on your own personal seam allowance. Well, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? The corners are based on the measurement of five sections of the mountain. So the best way is just to go ahead, turn it to the wrong side, count out five sections, and fold under those extra three sections. Take a ruler and measure it. Now the ideal measurement would be eight inches, but mine is actually seven and seven eighths. Now that's based on my personal seam allowance and on my pressing, so be sure and check yours. Well, now that I know it's seven and seven eighths, I cut a strip from the skies, first from the first round sky, and cut it into seven and seven eighths inch squares. Have four of them, like magic. Let's just place those on the design wall. Now, it's true for all of the corners. These are the, the sky corners for round two. Also cut at seven and seven eighths like magic. They go on the design wall too. And all of the corners will be cut that measurement. So the whole quilt goes together. I'm gonna take the mountain block and trim it up to seven and seven eighths. So just turn it so that the um, bottom of the mountain is to the right. I'm gonna take my square up ruler and place the lines parallel with the stitching and put six right up at the top peak. That's gonna be my measurement so that I'm consistent with my trimming. And then just go ahead and square off the bottom of the mountain. Now, so I'm consistent, I put a mark right along the uh, ruler at seven and seven eighths. I'm gonna turn this and just place the ruler, line up that mark, with the tape across the bottom, trim off the top, and every single one will be trimmed exactly the same. Well, I have the mountains, the corners. Now, what about the dividers? Now, you can have just plain dividers, or you can put little peaks on them. Oh, it's to peak or not to peak. The easiest one is just to do a plain divider. Now, you get that measurement by turning the block over, measuring just those two center sections. The ideal measurement is three and a half. Ooh, and that is looking good. Three and a half from edge to edge. So just cut a piece of your sky. This is three and a half inches wide by seven and seven eighths inch long. Plain dividers. Well, what if you want peaks? Okay, 
Those come from two inch wide strips. They are also seven and seven eighths inch in length. You need to have two of them for each one. You need to have two two inch mountain squares. So I'm just going to take these and draw diagonal lines on them. Now this is near image stuff and that's the stuff that gets confusing. So draw a diagonal line corner to corner on the mountains like this. Whoops slipped on me. A little piece of sandpaper under there would really help it. And so that you get them sewn correctly, why don't you just place them correctly on the bottom. I'm going to go like this so I sew up and put this one so I sew down. <laughs> Looks good. I think if you can see it visually then you're in really good shape. Now I placed an applique foot in my sewing machine. So much easier to sew on the line than uh, when using your quarter inch foot. So let me just slide this over and at this time your machine would just love to eat the corner of that. So hold on to those threads and stitch on the line. Now you'll know that you have mirror image going whenever you stitch on one line and you put the second one right behind it and they're not going in the same direction. That way if you're doing like scrappy mountains, you could put a different uh, color on each one of the ends, a different two inch strip on each one of them. Then all you need to do, get rid of those pins, take a ruler, see if I can get a straight line out of there. Take the quarter inch line on the ruler, cut off one peak, slide it along, cut off the second peak, take these tips, get rid of them. Unless you can think of something to do with them. My gosh, that would be a really little piece, wouldn't it? So set those seams and then just press over, give it a little steam, and you can see already I have the, the two peaks perfect. And then just like we did on that center, flip it right sides together for safety. How about a pin right through those seams so that whenever you sew it, it matches on that point and just like the center, press that seam open and flat. Well, we've got the corners, we have the dividers. How about the epicenter, the focal point of the whole mountain? You'll be a star with this one. You can make the patchwork for the center of your delectable mountain quilt, or you can go ahead and turn it into a decorator pillow. Now, these are the parts that I'm going to show you how to do. This is the sky right here. These are the dark points. I'm going to refer to these as floating points. This is the center, and it's a fussy cut. Ooh, a large scale floral cut on point wonderful for your couch or your chair. But let me show you how to make that block. Start with the star points. Now this is my dark purple. I'm using this for the points. This is the sky. This is four and a half inch by nine inch rectangles, right sides together. You draw a four and a half inch squaring line. Draw diagonal lines going up and down. And then sew a quarter of an inch seam on both sides. Then you just take and exactly as you marked it, you cut it apart. I'm going to go right down at the four and a half inch mark, turn my ruler, and line up on those corners, go up and down. And that makes quick work of those four pieces. They have to be squared up to an unusual measurement. This is the best part. They're three and seven eighths inches, and I have a new ruler to make it perfect. Well, if you look right here, Here's the three inch line. Here's the four inch line. I want three and seven eighths and there's little eighth inch marks along the sides. So I'm going to slide the seven eighths inch on the stitching on both sides. And then all I have to do is just trim on one side. That should be a perfect three and seven eighths. Turn it, cut off those tails on both sides get rid of the pieces. Now you want to actually set the seam with the sky on top. I know this is unusual because I'm going to press the seams towards the sky, towards the light. Well, I'm showing you this so you can set up seams for locking pieces throughout the, throughout the block. Okay, then turn it like this. Turn it so that the dark points are down towards you. And I'm just going to cut these 
right on one diagonal. These are all of the points for the star. Now you've got a left side and a right side. And I'm going to take the right stack and just place them with three and a half inch sky squares. It's going to look like this. And then this is just good old assembly line sewing. Take this piece, flip it right sides together, get it all lined up at the top, and you can just use your stiletto, help it through, hold on to those threads on the end, match it up. You're going to have a tip hanging out on the bottom, that's fine, but you want to just keep on assembly line sewing four of those pieces right through there. Let me do one more for you. Gosh, I just get started, I can't stop. Something with me, I love it so much. Okay, and then once you have all four done, go ahead and put the triangle on the top, open and finger press that seam so that it's behind the triangle. That's looking good. Let me just cut this apart and I'm actually going to trim that seam so that it lines up with the square. Okay, that's one half of the point. Now I'm going to take the left stack and it's just going to go right like this. Let me get the left stack. Right here, lay it down like this, and that's what makes the point. Flip this right sides together, match it up at the top, and just zip that right through. You're going to make four, just like this one. And once you have that sewn together, then you want to uh, press it and make sure it's straight across the bottom. Triangle on the top, open, press, looking good. So see, I have my quarter inch seam here and here, but oh, I could use a little bit of a haircut right across the bottom. So let me just take a ruler and place it right here. Keep that quarter inch seam and just trim it along there. Now, the center comes from squares and rectangles. And I have one all laid out, all ready to go. The fussy cut is a four and three-fourths inch square. So then these are four and three-fourths in width, but in height they're two and three-fourths. So this would have to be two and three-fourths as well. Let me show you how to fussy cut that. I'm going to take a large scale floral print and a six inch square ruler and just figure out which flower I like. It could be any of them. How about this one right here? Now, if I'm going to fussy cut it, I have to cut it on point. So let me just turn it like this and center four and three fourths inches. Let's see, I have the line going right down through. Here's four and a half here, here. And I'm just going to shove it up just a little bit. Now, actually, when you're doing this fussy cutting, it does put that square on the bias. I have one half done. Let me just turn it around the other way. Four and three-fourths inches. Trim up and over. And that's an on-point fussy cut. Oh, I hate to waste all of that, but there we go. This piece is going to fit nicely in the center. Now, this is just like a nine patch right here. Basically, basically you sew down on both sides of the uh, center square and then for the final pressing, press in towards the center. Now we want this piece to fit in with the mountain. So you've got to do one more measurement and that's to just take your mountain and we've got to find out what the width of this is. Now the width of my mountain down here across the bottom is 12 and a fourth inches. And so I am going to square up this piece to eight and three-fourths so everything goes together. Oh, there's not much. Eight and three-fourths. But all you're going to do is find out what your measurement of your mountain is. If it's eight and a half inch, if your mountain's 12, you square this up to eight and a half. If it's 12 and a fourth, then you square up your mountain to um, eight and three-fourths. And if your mountain is 12 and a half, then you square it up to nine inches. One more cut, and I've got it. So now all these stars, the points are just going to go right onto each side. 
They're going to lock their seams perfectly, line up, get your block sewn together, and then we can just put it right into the center of that mountain. Now, if you don't like stars, maybe flowers are your thing. These are just little applique flowers. There's two different colors in each one of the centers, two different colors of flowers, and two different colors of leaves. And then that you can see these are our machine stitched down with invisible thread and the blind hem stitch. Or you could even sew them down by hand if you would like. The secret to this applique is fusible interfacing. This is light to medium weight, non-woven, fusible interfacing. You cut pieces for two flowers for um, each one of the fabrics and just trace the pattern right on the fusible side of the interfacing and then pair it up with the right side of the fabric. That's the little dots against the right side of the fabric. He here's the two flowers in the medium purple the two flowers in the dark purple, and then all you do is sew on the line with 20 stitches to the inch. Now that is a tight stitch. You sure don't want to make any mistakes. And then do exactly the same thing with your leaves. You're going to have four in each one of the two colors, so you have a total of eight leaves. Well, once you sew on the line, then the fun starts. Just take your trimming scissors, and trim one eighth inch away. I know that's pretty close, but you trim one eighth inch away so that you don't have to do a lot of clipping in on the inside curves. Oh, just a little bit around here. Now you can use this technique for any applique. I wouldn't even know how to do needle turn. All right, I'm the whole way around. You just take your scissors and make a little cut in the interfacing only, about the size of a straw. You need to have a fat drinking straw. Oh, a fat one should be a free one. Just stick it right inside your flower. Turn it sideways so that you have fabric on the end of your straw. Then take the next useful tool, it's the bodkin, a ballpoint bodkin. Take the ball in the bodkin and just start pushing against that fabric. And all you're trying to do is just turn this right side out. Now, perfect for sitting around when you're watching TV. You might have to do it more than once. Make sure the fabric's on the straw because the interfacing is easily torn. So be careful. And then once you get it started um, turning right side out, you can go ahead and finish with your fingers and run the bodkin around on the inside of the fabric. Just pushing that out, poking it out. Oh, we've got a little bit right here. Get that all smoothed out. And once you have nice edges, lay it on your table. Let's see. And pick up another tool. Gosh, this is just full of tools. This is called a wooden iron. And all you need to do is just press from the center of your flower to the outside edge, rolling that interfacing over. Now the background square is a 13 inch square. And I have it actually pressed into quarters. This is a seven and a quarter inch bowl right on top. Find something approximately like that. I centered it and then I'm just gonna take a marker and draw around the outside edge. So these are placement for each one of my pieces. Now I have my pieces all trimmed and turned, ready for pressing in place. These are the flowers. Now this is the dark flower. I'm just going to take it and center it right on the circle. I did some little yellow yo-yos. I thought they would look really cute. And just take each one of the sets of flowers with their dark and their light and just line it up on the circle. And they actually just touch each other and position them exactly as you like them. Let's see if I can get this one. Oh, I've got to get those flowers. Mix up that medium and that dark. All right, and once they're positioned exactly as you want them, just go ahead, remove the yo-yos because you can't really fuse those in place. And then with your steam iron, just go down on it hard, give it some steam, and just keep on going around, steaming it in place until it's completely adhered. Oh, I see some water coming out. Once you have it pressed on the right side, then just turn it over and press it from the wrong side. Now, you could do yo-yos, or if you would like, you could go ahead and put some little buttons in there. 
like this. Here's some little buttons or yo-yos. You can even mix them up and then once they're all arranged, go ahead and finish them with that blind hem stitch or stitch by hand. It'll make a great center choice. Now I'm going to turn my single mountain blocks into a mountain range. Now I like the applique center, but I did decide to use the Peace Star Center simply because the dark purple points on the star tend to bring in those dark mountains from the outside edge, ties it all together. Now the star has been squared up to 12 and a fourth inches. That's the same as the width of the mountain block. The whole center, round one, is sewn together as if it were a nine patch. I'd like to do the vertical rows first and then go back and go the opposite way. Now to do the vertical rows, you just take that center row, flip it over to the left and just match the outside edges, stitch along there. Then the peace star would come next. And when you go down the peace star, be careful that you do not clip off those points. If you look, you can see those seams. And then it would be the third block right down here. You sew down the vertical rows. And then once you have them sewn, do not clip them apart. Oh, it's just like using pins. So much easier. And then you just open up that middle row, and you're going to flip the third row right sides together to it, so top to bottom without clipping your threads. And then when you go back across the other way, you press those seams away from the mountain blocks on both one of them. These seams right here will lock together. Well, I'm ready. I'm just going to sew round one together the peak of perfection. I want to show you how nicely the star seams line up with the mountain seams. Now right here, this is the first point, they're opposite each other, they lock together here. The seams also right here in the center of the star off that floating point match. And then once again, down here, the seams lock and match together. Now these are the sides, these were added first, this one block. So those seams are pressed in towards the mountain block on both sides. Then the top and bottom are pressed out. Top here, up, and down here. And also right here in the corners, every seam locks together. It's just perfect. Now on round two, I already sewed the sides together. And whenever you sew the sides together, you press the seams towards that divider. And this one is the divider with the peak in it. The, press, the seams are pressed in or away from the mountain block. And when you go to add these sides together, let me turn this over and show you, they lock together. So when you take this piece, and let me just pin it in place for you so you can see. It's great so they actually fit in place. Every seam along here will just lock. It's so easy to add those seams on the sides first, press those seams in, and then add the top and the bottom. Seams go out. Let me sew round two to this piece. I have two creative mountain quilts to show you. Sue Bouchard made this one out of flannel and it's very cozy. Well, the center panel reminds her of her retreat in Montana. Oh, it's just so fun. The log cabin and the moose at the door and then the baby cubs. And she even pieced the corners. She did a bear's paw here and a tree. Oh, it's just wonderful. Now, she had extra geese flying around her sewing room, so she put them to good use. Now, these are the three by six geese. She used eight right in the center, and then she used more geese in the corners. Oh, it's just so masculine looking in the fall colors. Oh, a 1940s corny love poem starts out. I'll love you till the river jumps over the mountain and the salmon sing in the streets. Well, I hope you love making your delectable mountains quilt as much as I did. So get your top done and I'll show you how to finish it.